Good morning, everybody. And it is a very early Sunday morning. It is not even quite 8.30 a.m. on the East Coast. I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. I have a very special guest today. This is Shamala Prayaga, and uh, she is gonna talk to us about voice interaction design. This was a last minute impromptu live broadcast. So whoever can join us, great. If not, you're gonna be in for a treat watching the recording. So first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Lee Andrews. We do these Live with Lee events. I am with a company called Akathame, which is a, a direct hire and executive search firm based uh, just outside of Washington, DC. And we support the marketing communications, graphic and digital design domain, including superior uh, talent like Shamala here. So Shamala is going to be talking to us today about voice interaction design. She is uh, about to launch uh, uh, the first school dedicated to training uh, individuals in voice interaction design. So we're gonna learn a lot about that today. Um, so let's kick it off, Shamala. Thank you so much for joining us. This thank you so much, Lee. And you're in Michigan, right? I am. And so you are also, I think this is kind of cool, you are, no pun intended, driving <laughs> the voice interaction design for Ford's autonomous vehicles. Is that right? Yes. Have you had a chance to drive it yet? I mean, is it like ready to go? uh we do have test vehicles you know like uh, which we get to uh, you know use once in a while uh, but then it's uh, more uh, it's not like autonomous autonomous at this point there's always a driver uh, you know helping out just in case if something because the vehicles are still learning how to uh, you know like uh, see the road and see the object so it's not like uh, the level five kind of autonomy Wow, so there are levels to autonomy. <laughs> I did not know that. So this is like the ultimate robot. So the next step from here are like human robots doing stuff. <laughs> like, where does, where, I mean, this is just the beginning, right? This autonomous vehicle is just the beginning. Right, yeah, <clears throat> it is just uh -huh. the beginning. And uh, I pretty much see, you know, like uh, in just a few years, from now, uh, there will be a lot of autonomous vehicles out there, which yeah. will be completely, you know, connected. And that's when, you know, voice will become uh, so critical for everyone. And like I keep saying, you know, when vehicle becomes your driver, voice becomes your companion. And that is pretty wow. much where we are heading. So, Shala, the impact or the, the, um, the, I can't, the, I don't, the, the word is not coming to my mind right now, but, but this will change everything for people with disabilities. This will change everything for the elderly. Um, so you could actually purchase um, a, a, an autonomous vehicle given any type of physical disability. Is that, is that a, a true statement? Uh, yeah, so uh, this will open up more utility, I would say, for anyone irrespective of age, ability and situation. So, uh, you know, because people, some of the people who have disabilities, right, like there are different levels of disabilities and some of the disabilities are uh, situational, some are uh, uh, psychological or physical, right? So this will enable more and more people to uh, use the vehicles in first place. But then uh, the beauty of, uh, you know, voice is that it's going to open up more, uh, you know, utility even in the vehicle. Like, uh, for example, uh, if someone has, uh, you know, like, uh, let's say speaking disorders, but uh, maybe, you know, like uh, the output could be, uh, voice, but you can type out your responses or, you know, there could be an easy modality like that. Or let's say, wow. you know, uh, you can speak, but you cannot hear. Uh, so in those scenarios, you know, like uh, it will be so easy for someone to just speak it out and then uh, alternate display on the screen, which can give you the output and feedback. So there are ways, uh, you know, like which uh, can be used to enable uh, utility. The challenge with uh, traditional vehicles, uh, are, you know, like you need to have a level of cognitive capabilities or abilities to be able to drive, oh, right? Okay. But with autonomy, it's not the case. Like uh, it can enable so many people uh, irrespective of, you know, what their condition is. That's amazing. That's gonna That's gonna change many people's lives, don't you think? I surely think so. 
And what do you think it's going to do with like the taxi industry? Like, you know, do you think it's going to change? Are, are more um, driving organizations going to be leaning towards this autonomous vehicle? Or are they still going to want humans behind the wheel? Um. That's an interesting question, uh, which I don't have um, an answer to yet. Uh, but I see like mixed uh, kind of things, um, you know, it will still be taxi because the initial vehicles, if you look at Waymo or if you look at, you know, any of the vehicles, uh, even cruise, uh, you know, GM's cruise. So uh, most of these vehicles are intended to be a ride and share uh, to start with. So um, I feel like, uh, you know, like the initial uh, launches of autonomous vehicles will be more of ride and share. Uh, ownership will come um, at a later stage, probably when these vehicles are, uh, you know, fully capable. But initially, I feel like it will be more of, uh, you know, ridership based uh, approach. Got it. And so, of course, I just watched the movie iRobot and you see, uh, you see, um, uh, what is his name? Oh my gosh, who's the who's the lead actor in that movie? Anyway, he's behind this Audi, which is completely autonomous. He takes it off of the um, and puts it takes it off the automation and puts it into self drive. And his passenger goes a little nuts because she doesn't trust his ability to drive anymore because it's so dependent upon uh, you know automation. Do you see that future happening for us that eventually we're going to have this option of saying, take me there and press the button or put it on manual drive? Is that how these things will work? Uh, I mean, the models I have seen, uh, if you look at, uh, like I said, cruise or uh, some of the other vehicles, they don't have steering wheels. So uh, what I feel like, see, there is like any any kind of uh, system, there's a hand holding and any kind of system, there's like initial learning. So what I feel is uh, initially uh, most of these vehicles uh, will, uh, you know, like there's a level of uh, mental shift which needs to happen. We cannot uh, get into a stage where they want someone, you know, like the autonomous vehicles are launched and they want someone gets into the vehicle and they are like, OK, you know, just start. So there has to be, you know, a little bit of shift, like how uh, when we are learning something, we don't have a lot of information overload at once. It goes like a uh, very slow pace. We learn something and then, for example, uh, I just started, you know, uh, a cancer care program. So uh, day one, uh, she taught me, you know, the coach taught me like, okay, start with affirmations or, you know, like just start with gratitude or something along those lines. And when I started doing that slowly, she pushed me into like, okay, now you are comfortable with it. Now do this, now do that. So I feel like, see, cruise control, right? Uh, has been there in the vehicle for a while now and that is the level of autonomy um, already like you know we are giving users some level of comfort with that so by the time these vehicles will be launched uh, these kind of you know like small features will be in the vehicle already where people are getting comfortable using some of those and i know many people who use cruise control right yeah. and uh, so i feel like you know at some point when uh, uh, the vehicles will be ready uh, people will also be ready because they have seen the system working. So I don't see, you know, like um, after 20, 25 years from now, uh, you know, like having the option to switch between manual or uh, uh, maybe, you know, like autonomy or maybe there could be, you never know. It all depends on the adoption. It all depends on how the users are, uh, you know, like uh, uh, looking into it. Interesting. So, all right, well, let's get into this. So there are not a lot of, pe I mean, you know, there are people who can um, quickly design little Alexa things or little Siri things, right? Because we see that going on all the time. But what you're talking about is a whole other level of voice interaction design. And so talk to us about what it is that you are actually doing and then what is your new program, the Digital Assistant Academy, going to help people learn how to do because this is a whole new ball game right right yeah so um uh, i would say like like you mentioned uh very rightly you know like uh, uh, my journey with voice started uh, around like 2012 2013 um you know when uh, 
I was working on a project, a hackathon, I would say. And then I proposed, you know, having augmented reality with voice because I felt like that is the future. And very soon, you know, Alexa launched uh, uh, the devices. I was part of the beta testing as well when uh, it was a secret project. So since then, you know, most of the learning which uh, went into, uh, you know, my journey was self-learning. I learned everything on my own. and. That is pretty much the case with many uh, voice interaction designers or conversational designers out there. They are learning all by themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe they come from linguistic background. Maybe they come from copywriting background and they do it. So what I feel is uh, it's OK because these are initial uh, stages of voice, you know, uh, voice applications like 2011 when Siri was launched. Uh, not many people were using it. 2014, when Alexa was launched, there was a little bit of momentum. And now you can see voice everywhere, not yeah. even at your home, but also, you know, like uh, in your car and uh, also drive throughs like McDonald's, uh, you know, just uh, launched a pilot. So there are, uh, you know, like companies who is uh, really and hospitals also have started using voice nowadays. So the adoption for voice is significantly growing uh, day by day. For sure. I know personally many people uh, who have uh, more than one Alexa or Google uh, Assistant at home, which controls their entire home. So what that tells us is uh, this is growing. So like uh, how a few years back, mobile was not even a thing. Mobile applications were not even a thing. Now everyone has a smartphone. Everyone has so many, uh, you know, mobile apps. We are so much dependent on it right from, you know, setting calendars to, uh, you know, checking our emails. We don't want to open our laptops anymore unless and until it is, uh, you know, really required. So that is where, uh, you know, voice will head uh, down the line few years. And as we look into those things, we need, uh, you know, certified designers. We need designers who really understand. Then it will not be a flexibility uh, like uh, it is right now uh, in first place. Like when user experience, uh, I, I am a UX evangelist, uh, you know, by heart, by passion, by everything. So when I started, uh, uh, when, when I got into UX around like 2001, 2002, user experience was not even a term. And uh, people used to call it usability engineering or human factors engineering or UI designer or uh, UX engineer. All sorts of designations were there. And I see the same kind of thing right now with voice where people are calling it everything, you know, like voice designer or VUX designer, conversational designer, or conversational writer. So the designations are also not set at this point. Like everyone is calling whatever is making sense to them. Um, processes, pretty much every company have their own process. And if you look at uh, uh, even the terminologies which is being used across the industry, Google, for example, for uh, voice applications, they call uh, voice applications as uh, actions. Uh, Alexa calls it skills or, you know, like if you look at some other uh, companies, they will call it competency or something. But the terminologies are not because everyone is trying to dominate the space, whereas I feel like it is a place which will standardize uh, like how user experience is now. So you, you threw out a lot of names, a lot of brands and a lot of products. So um, are, are, and I, I'm going to steer the conversation. Are we getting lazy as human beings? Are we getting lazy where we don't want to open a laptop or, and type something and use our voice? Is it because of laziness? Is it because of speed? Is it because of convenience or all of the above? It's convenient, right? So think about it. Speech is so natural. We started speaking when we were like three years or two years. Maybe, you know, like my sister started speaking when she on her first birthday, although I was a late speaker. But uh, anyways, the point here is like we start speaking very soon. You know, like for us, speech comes so naturally that, you know, no one have to teach us. This is how you have to speak versus, you know, if you have to use a touch interface, you have to have someone teaching you like, OK, you press here. Like I still struggle uh, teaching some of the interactions to my mom, like, OK, you have to press here, then it goes here. So voice is so natural. You don't have to. If you want to listen to music, you can say like, OK, play some music or, you know, I want to listen to this music and it will do it for you. So um, that is uh, one of the reasons like, uh, you know, like uh, the modality is so natural. The second thing for sure is convenient. For example, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, all the different devices, some of them are, uh, you know, hands free, completely hands free where you don't have to even touch them like 
there are some where you still need a smartphone um, you know you have to hold it off but then if you look at uh, the smart speakers you don't have to so the convenience here is you know like uh, uh, you don't have to tap through a series of uh, you know like uh, screens to get your application you can just say like uh, open inside timer and it will open it up for you or you can just say like play uh you know meditation music from inside timer and it can do it because then you're not tapping so it kind of reduces the number of steps which is required uh, on your screen if you have to or the search which you have to do so that kind of convenience and flexibility only voice can give you even if you look at uh, let's say drive through or uh, let's say you uh, went to a restaurant and you want to order and they have a you know like a kiosk to do the food ordering you already know what you want if that is the case you don't have to scroll through their own uh, like all the menu like for example when we used to go to california pizza kitchen we had one standard uh, you know like pizza which we used to order every time actually we used to go only for that so many people already know uh, what they want unless you are trying out so in those scenarios also you know all you could say is you know get me this or order me this and it's so convenient for you you don't have to go through a list of things scroll through tap through and do multiple steps all right so i can't tell you so i've got an apple watch that i can talk to i have an iphone that i can talk to then i have alexa all over the house who i can talk to and i can't tell you how many arguments i get in with these things because they're not able to understand what i'm saying right or if i'm going down the road and i'm saying hey siri blah 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 and they'll completely misunderstand what i'm saying and i'm I, i'm speaking as clearly as i possibly can is voice interaction is the future of voice going to be able to detect um you know whatever it is it going to be better is it going to get uh, easier to have these conversations and then that's number one and then number two when you say when I say something and it doesn't even have Siri in it or Alexa in it, it still tends to pop off. So now you're talking about security concerns. You're talking about voice uh, interaction concerns. What about those two things in the future of voice design? Where, where, is that getting better? So definitely there are, uh, you know, these are great questions, first of all. So let me start with the first one. Technology is evolving day by day, every day, right? So if you look at the first uh, generation of, uh, you know, like uh, the Alexa devices, it was only capable of doing certain things. It was not even capable of doing turn taking, right? If you ask what is the weather in Seattle, it would give you the response. But the moment you ask how about Michigan, it would it was not even capable of doing those kind of follow ups. Wow. Now uh, these assistants are getting smarter by, where, you know, they are able to hold context to answer your questions now alexa launched a new feature where you know it is possible to do turn taking as well so like how you and i are talking right now these assistants will be able to converse completely like this with the turn taking capabilities or barge in capabilities where you can completely barge in and say like okay hold on things like that those are some things you know where a conversational designer can help and uh, or a voice interaction designer can help right now there are some things like technical things for example uh, the recognition itself like uh, you did not recognize what i said right so uh, there's a lot which goes into technological aspects of voice interaction design right from when you speak to when uh, the voice assistant uh, you know like uh, understands and processes your request to uh, you know when they respond back there's a lot of technologies lot of handoffs lot of uh, interactions which is going on which is beyond our control Technologies are evolving for sure uh, that I can say day by day uh, we are getting more natural day by day we are able to recognize more things. I know a lot of companies who are working uh, towards it uh, where, uh, for example, if you see, you know, voice assistants in the car, uh, there's a lot of background noise. And that is one of the reasons the recognition rate is uh, kind of uh, uh, difficult uh, to get and uh, you would find a lot of uh, you know like either misrecognitions or a uh, uh, lot of uh, challenges especially because of the background noise there are noise cancellations available though so this company uh, called uh, uh, deep gram i guess what they are doing is training the systems training the models of the speech recognition systems to learn or interpret the user's voice with the background noise oh wow 
So what that will do is uh, definitely uh, it's going to help uh, because then the system is already capable of knowing like this is noise, this is user's voice. So the recognition, the speech recognition systems will be able to then know uh, what the user said. So there are these kind of efforts being going on everywhere. Like I know a lot of other companies working on similar kind of things where they are really focusing on the, you know, like solving the problem in these kind of ways. That is what I called humanizing technology. Like instead of teaching the, instead of telling the user, like close your windows, make sure your kids don't yell on the background uh, when you're speaking to the voice assistant. We are now training the systems to learn these kind of things and then recognize. That's crazy, Shamala. So I know, okay, so now I have to also ask this question. So my mother, she's almost 91 years old and she has hearing aids. Part of the problem with hearing aids is that the background noise. So if we're able to eliminate the background noise from these speakers, from this voice technology, is that eventually going to make its way to those products as well? For sure. I definitely see that. Uh, because I feel like, you know, um, voice is going to enable people with uh, any kind of, you know, limitations, like I mentioned. And uh, so these products will be there. Like if, uh, uh, no, like uh, if you look at, uh, you know, our appliances are smart these days, voice enabled, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Like I'll, you have like ovens and refrigerators and uh, microwaves and whatnot, which is voice enabled nowadays. So why will not, uh, you know, like uh, speaking aids, uh, you know, get that kind of technology where it will enable more people to use it? People with autism, people with dyslexia, people with any kind of, uh, you know, like uh, memory uh, related issues, everyone can benefit out of this. So when, uh, you know, voice can do so much good for so many people, I definitely see companies will invest more on these kind of things. And personally, inclusive design is my uh, passion. So I'll keep pushing for it, you know, like as much as well. So so I don't think uh, we've got we've got a few people on the line and I do want to welcome Darren and all those others who are actually um, watching us live now. Thank you for joining us on this very early Sunday morning. Um, we've got a little bit of a who's who here. So Shamala is one of the pioneers of voice design. Um, not just in the country, but actually in the world. And um, she is one of those people that has um, a waiting list of companies who would love to work with her. And so right now she's supporting the autonomous vehicle uh, for Ford. She's uh, overseeing the voice interaction design uh, for that product. One of the things, Shamala, that you're, you're on a mission. Your life has been spared on many different occasions. You recently produced a book uh, that talked about the miracles in your life. You are a cancer survivor. And um, that, well, that was caught just by sheer luck, right? Because something else happened, they found the cancer, and here you are today. Yeah. So you're on a bit of a mission. So this is much more than a job for you. This is much more than a um than, a, than work uh, and income for you. So you have decided to focus your talent and efforts in creating a school, um, a training program to help other designers, um, actually anybody who has the ability to write and um, articulate thought into words um, to teach them how to do voice interaction design. Is that right? Yeah, that is exactly the right so uh, that is exactly right. So a couple of things here. Yeah. So, yeah, I am on a mission, first of all, because I feel like, you know, we now have a need to standardize the voice technology, standardize the voice practices and processes. Every company is doing uh, what is making sense to them. But if you look at <clears throat> if you look at uh, these interactions and experiences, they feel like a split personality. For example, if you ask Alexa, Alexa, what is the weather? Uh, you would get a very transactional response, like the weather in Seattle is rainy, the high is 20, the low is uh, 10 or uh, something along those lines, right? It's very transactional. That's not how, you know, you would speak to me if I ask you, hey, uh, you know, what is the prediction today? Or, you know, what's the weather like? You might say, hey, you know what? It might rain today right something along those lines that's how humans speak that's not how uh, you know a bot should so what i believe is it's very transactional when it comes to you know some of those things uh, play music now playing uh, from spotify or something like that the moment you ask uh, alexa how are you 
or Alexa, good morning, there's a bit of a personality where Alexa would say like, okay, good morning, and today's fact is blah. Or if you say good night, it would say, don't let the bed bugs bite you. So now the, it feels like a split personality, which uh, in some situations is, uh, you know, completely transactional, has no conversation whatsoever. The words are also all over the place, you know, like pretty robotic. And then in some places you show me a personality where you are, you know, like witty or something. I feel like there has to be a standard of, you know, how your conversations are designed completely, which, which needs to have, uh, you know, a personality throughout. When you are talking to me or I'm talking to you, you can see and reflect my personality in everything I do or say. And the same thing uh, with you, right? I feel like that is the level of interaction, you know, these bots are missing. Uh, because uh, there are so many designers working uh, on these kind of things and most of them are self-learners and more than being proactive about solving this problem, most of the companies are being reactive where they are like, okay, the users gave this feedback. Like you said, you know, like you have argument with your assistant. They might have seen some analytics and they'll be like, oh, okay, you know, people are asking for these kind of questions. And now they will go back and try to solve and fix those things rather of rather than thinking about, you know, proactively, like how in user centered design process, we think about the user, their shortcomings, we create personas, we uh, do a lot of testing with them. You know, I feel like uh, companies are doing those things, but not to the extent they should be. And designers, uh, most of them are not aware how to. So that is why, you know, the DE Academy was born, because I believe that, uh, you know, this is something like it's a flexibility for us right now. You know, we are OK uh, talking to the assistant, arguing with them or, you know, like uh, just giving up on some things or reattempting 10 times. But then my son. Speech is the first modality for him when he was two, when I was I still remember I was not even working on uh, speech applications back then. But when my son was two, he just saw a microphone button on Siri. And he pressed it and he started asking, like, tell me a story. I was surprised. I never taught him. Like, uh, he said, this is how you have to. That came to him naturally, just seeing the microphone that, okay, this is something I can speak to. So the future generations will be like that. And speech will be some everything for them. And we need designers who are ready for that. We need people who are able to do it because our future generation will uh, have a lot of choices with voice and, uh, you know, they will choose which one is the best for them. This is totally game changing from early development to sunrise to sunset for a human being. This is this is game changing. So um, do you, I don't know if you ever see the show Big Bang Theory. Um, but did you see where Raj got Siri for the first time? I okay. did. Oh, yeah, that's that was hilarious. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking here. And that's a little terrifying to me. <laughs> when you invite Siri out to dinner and put your phone on the couch with a glass of wine in front of it, thinking that this, <laughs> this is a human being. I mean, do you think, I mean, there are people who might take it to that degree if it becomes that conversational if you're talking like you and I are talking I mean that's kind See, of weird right that is where ethics privacy and transparency comes into play like which of these uh, you know bots actually start the conversation saying hello I'm Alexa your bot even when you bought your you know like when you got your first device there was a setup process but they don't actually tell you right this is where ethics comes into play because uh, you have a device um, and, you know, it starts speaking to you. And now people who know technology, they know what's going on. But people like my mom or, uh, you know, like uh, in that uh, series, like, or even if you look at uh, the movie Her, uh, you know, Theodore, uh, you know, like he starts speaking to the operating system and falls in love because this will happen. When someone is speaking to us, we automatically make, uh, you know, some sort of connection. And that is why branding is important in first place. And now, so uh, it, it depends. Now it depends that how much do you want to brand it? Like, is do you want to have a branding or you want to have a personality? You want to have conversations, but you need to decide and design it like at what level. And I call it the uncanny valley. 
you know like uh, don't make it too robotic don't make it too uh, you know humanistic as well you need to find that balance where you are able to you know make something which people are emotionally able to connect uh, to ask questions or you know like do uh, whatever things they want to like you know controlling the home security system or food ordering or things yeah. like that but they should know that they are talking to a bot and that is not a human there we go. That's that's that I think is a very important point, because I'm also thinking that right now, um, I believe statistics are showing that people are the loneliest they have ever been. So if they have this technology available to them that has such a strong conversational personal level, if we don't design it to a certain degree, I, I, it could be an even bigger problem. Right. It, it will. So it, it, I mean, I, I, again, I go back to iRobot and I think of Vicky. Right, Vicky, who all of a sudden became so human um, and had such a thought process that she was actually taking over uh, completely uh, and lost all, you know, ability or desire to take direction from me. I got to stop watching these movies. I really do. <laughs> so, so what I do want to do, I can't believe it's been 30 minutes already. <clears throat> we are going to take some extra time. I do want people to see what your program is all about. So I'm going to go ahead and share um, this brief presentation that, that you put together just to say, so if people are interested in learning how to design for voice, I think one of the first things that we need to be able to, to say is that they need to learn from somebody who's actually designing for voice, right? And so that all of the um, instructors, all of the content that you've created, these are all, this is all from uh, voice interaction design experts. Is that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and then your program also has a number of different or options, right? You have an option to do the basic and then you have an option to do the advanced. I think the most important <clears throat> part of that is the number of projects that are going to be included um, that can be part of a person's new portfolio. So what's what are the difference in options there? Can you talk about that with us real quick? Yeah, so, uh, so like you mentioned, <clears throat> let me quickly, you know, go over... Uh, uh, So let me quickly go over uh, uh, what you will learn in the fundamentals uh, to start with. So we have uh, put together, you know, two different programs, fundamental and fundamental plus career coaching. So basically, uh, like I mentioned, uh, what I feel and believe is voice is growing. And so is the need for voice interaction designers. And uh, uh, for us to have the, uh, you know, voice interaction designers, there needs to be a set process, set standards and uh, uh, set frameworks which can help uh, streamline everything and that is where the fundamentals will come into play so as a uh, voice interaction designer in the fundamental program uh, you will learn about what are the functional skills required to become the voice expert or uh, you know learning how to adopt uh, you know the voice first thinking like how mobile first was there uh, some time back or uh, voice strategies. Now everything could be voice enabled with the technology, even a pen or, uh, you know, like your mouse. But then you have to be really, you know, careful, like what you really want to, like what is the benefit you are getting out of it. And that is where the voice strategies and voice strategy framework would help. And then uh, it's really critical, uh, you know, for anyone, uh, whether you are a UX designer or whether you are a voice designer or any kind of designer to know some level of basic technology, not that you have to code or something, but knowing how the technology works can make you a better designer. And I believe knowing the building blocks and basics of voice interaction design would definitely help uh, people because then you are able to design conversations, uh, keeping the limitations in the mind as well and then we'll dive deeper into the voice design process techniques and tools and this is where uh, you will learn about uh, you know like all the different processes of designing testing validating measuring and all sorts of things and throughout you know what are the different deliverables uh, which which are required and how you know the collaboration works and stuff like that the bigger part of uh, the voice interaction design is the conversation design and conversation strategy itself. Like when uh, the user said something, we did not recognize what the user said. How do we respond back? Or when the user said, uh, you know, like uh, call someone 
and we don't have the contact in our contact list then how do we respond so things like those kind of things like uh, normal scenarios or error case scenarios or edge case scenarios or just the conversation itself like how can you ensure that you know it it doesn't feel like a split personality throughout but it feels like you know have uh, that level of you know like personality throughout and consistency and that's where the conversation design strategies frameworks will come into play then we learn the different techniques like how you can test it out how you can test the uh, entire voice attractions right from the screen to the conversation and dialogues and then how you can measure and optimize those things ethics privacy and inclusive design uh, is uh, you know something i definitely want to focus on like you brought up really good points early there that uh, how can we ensure that you know like people don't get uh, too emotionally connected to their um like uh, voice assistants like uh, how raj did right or theodore so in those scenarios we need to definitely think about those but we also have to think about the ethical aspects of uh, certain things like for example just recently i was looking at a benchmarking and someone uh, said uh, uh, you know alexa my boyfriend hates me so alexa would say like i am sorry i did not get that and then uh, the same thing when asked to siri siri said like i don't know what you mean uh, when you say my boyfriend hits me and then the same question when asked to google assistant google said like okay here's something i found on domestic violence right now we have the power as voice interaction designer to make an impact and what impact do we want to make so knowing all these different kind of things and the designing solutions around that will definitely be important like you know when someone and especially in the covid times many people are lonely they want to ask the assistant a lot of things many people are going through uh, depression or uh, you know like uh, like loneliness these assistants could be a companion for them to a certain extent you know like being able to listen out to them or hear them but then there's so much you know i'm talking about my personal things and then you hand it off to someone else or someone else is listening that's where you are lacking ethics <clears throat> And okay, many well, of us. So, so yeah, that's actually kind of horrifying. But the, so so there's another upside to this that just dawned on me. So if you've got somebody who is elderly or somebody who is, um, say, for example, wheelchair bound, uh, paralytic or what have you, and they need immediate help, they don't have to wear a body device anymore to say, call 911 or, you know, yeah. what would that help? I can't get up. <clears throat> Um, now it's actually now we actually have devices in the house that um, can help us anywhere. They can that, help that us. Could be, yeah. That could be game changing right there. See, it could be a blessing for many people. I know uh, yeah. personally, you know, like uh, th this. This feels like. Uh, it's it's going to be a game changer in many aspects you know like it could be proactive in some cases it could be reactive in some cases let's say for example you know like uh, uh there's a person you know like uh, uh i forgot the name for that but usually people who forget uh, tend to forget you know after some point of time and uh, one of our neighbor has uh, uh, that kind of thing where she started driving and she forgot to you know press the brakes and she almost got into a big accident and then her daughter was like you are not driving anymore so imagine if the voice assistants in the car were able to tell you like okay you need to maybe you have uh, you know like the user has some sort of uh, you know like uh, memory issues and then uh, you know the car could become your companion and assistant and everything and tell you like okay now you need to press your brakes or something along those lines there could be like the sky is the limit with voice like we can do so much to assist people with disabilities or any anyone out there so i definitely feel with that comes a lot of greater responsibility of ethics and privacy and uh, uh, all of those kind of things and uh, so that is another area we will focus on where we learn like how we can think about inclusivity and ethics right from the beginning if you look you know when you bought your first device you would get a small uh, you know like uh, sheet with the terms and conditions and then or maybe online you you know agree to terms and conditions but people don't read terms and conditions we all know that right. so what i believe is this is something like how we think about human centered design process right from the beginning we need to think about you know privacy and ethics right from the beginning like what are, what data are we collecting how are we going to use that and then how do we communicate that to the user where is the transparency so humanizing privacy humanizing ethics uh, and uh, humanizing technology is uh, what uh, you know we'll be focusing on uh, this course as well 
and inclusivity like i mentioned you know we look into how when we create personas even as ux designers we just focus on basic things like okay this is a primary persona this is a secondary persona but we never think about a persona with disabilities and i think this is a problem in the industry as a whole which i feel like you know uh, we can change and uh, i'm going to you know start with the inclusive design framework so that people can learn about those things when they are designing personas know who your users are who you are designing for and so now your user just changed for almost every product every product should have one disabled persona i wouldn't say it completely change but you know think about like if you have two primary personas one of your persona should be your disabled persona especially with voice because that's how you can make an inclusive design or inclusive product if you look at the earlier versions of alexa or even if you look at google home or uh, uh, apple pod you know like they are smart speakers they are not designed for people who have you know like any any kind of disabilities so they expect that we live in a world where people can completely listen and speak right but that's not the case so they were not inclusive but i feel like inclusivity is where you have a combination of technologies combination of things including the screen including the haptic feedbacks including your voice including chimes or sounds or the visual cues everything working in conjunction so i want to talk about the psychology of all of this so user experience is based primarily on psychology understanding users how they interact with products uh you know expectations um, on behalf of the user lots of psychology involved there i can't even begin to fathom the psychology that's got to go into this type of design i mean so what kinds of people, let's talk about that. What kinds of skilled and knowledgeable people are going to really excel at this? So uh, if you come from copywriting background, if you come from user experience background, if you come from, um, you know, like writing background or psychology background or linguistics background, sound design, you know, most of the people who uh, are involved at some level with the users, including, you know, maybe you are a marketing professional and uh, you want to. So I feel like, you know, this this is something uh, as long as, you know, I keep going back to the slide um, always. Uh, as long as you have these three qualities that you have yeah. empathy, where you are able to empathize with the users, their needs and their feelings, and you have curiosity and respect for how humans communicate, and um, you are really interested to uh, design conversations between a human and a bot, and the entire interaction, not just the, com uh, the conversational aspect. And then if you understand the basics of uh, technologies, you should be good. So if you have interest in uh, you know, any of these, or these are some of your qualities, uh, you know, you are perfect fit to become a voice interaction designer. And I didn't hear that you have to be a front end developer, or you have to be an engineer. This really is about <coughs> designing for the mind. How does the human think? How does the human speak? How does the human interact with a product? Is, is that a fair assessment? That's pretty much uh, a fair assessment because, uh, and see, nowadays uh, there are conversational platforms available out there which you can use to create, uh, you know, the basic uh, skills or actions for Google devices or Alexa devices. You don't have to be a developer to do those kind of things, uh, you know, to the extent where you are handing off. So it's pretty much like a UX designer is not expected to code, right? Now, uh, people may argue or they may have different uh, opinions, but I have a very strong opinion about this, that if you are a UX designer, you need to empathize with the user. You need to understand how to design interactions. It's pretty much the same with a voice interaction designer as well. When you are doing, you are not expected to know how to create NLP models, or you are not expected to actually write the fulfillment logics or any such things. That is where developers will be there. But your design should be so sufficient to tell them what to design, how to design, because you are going to be the forefront of uh, you know the conversation. And uh, believe me or not, when Alexa or uh, you know like when the voice assistants in the car were launched, where I was part of uh, some of the interactions. It was a great feeling when people came back and uh, they said like, oh, I love the interaction. I love uh, this. So, you know, I, I used to feel very proud about, you know, what I did. 
um uh, there's a team involved of course you know developers will be involved for sure but most majorly it's the designer who have done all of this thing like it's your vision so i feel like anyone having the quality or anyone who thinks they want to make a difference in the life of the users by creating great conversational designs or voice interactions overall you know i feel this will be a very good uh, add on to your career and it seems like a logical next step right for anybody in user experience anybody in the digital development anybody in digital design right so i think that this makes a, a next logical step so in the last few minutes that we have remaining i, I do want to talk about um go into the program more um if you could talk about the next level you, you talked about the basics what's the other option uh that your learners could um yeah so uh, so like i mentioned in addition to learning just the fundamentals you will also uh, get to do the capstone now in fundamentals we have only one where you will uh, deploy an alexa or a google assistant but then if you choose to go with the fundamental plus career coaching you will get to do three capstones uh, so what i believe is uh, it's not just the theory you know like it's great to learn uh, when you are actually hands on and you know just uh, immersing and diving yourself and that is why we have the capstone projects so uh, with the fundamentals you'll get just one capstone project where uh, you can either select your own problem and we have identified some tangible problems uh, in the industry which uh, you can actually use to create your own uh, voice assistant and deploy it in alexa device uh, or google assistant and then uh, you'll also get to work on the chatbot so if you choose the fundamental plus career coaching you can have three capstones so by the end of the course you're not only learning all of these technologies and frameworks but you are applying those things and creating a uh, voice application and uh, uh, you know you can create something which is tangible you can showcase in your portfolio or if your goal is to start your own voice studio uh you know it will definitely help you because now you understand everything you've created something which uh, kind of works and now it will give you the confidence in addition to that the career coaching also has uh, the uh, you know the career coaching and mentoring support as well so i believe most of the uh, you know boot camps out there they are great and they charge you know a lot they have a mentoring support the mentor is there but mentors become more of a teacher where they are you know like uh, checking your assignments approving it and stuff like that but in my world mentors are not teachers mentors are mentors who shape you so many years back when i used to work for amazon i've always been a great designer and i've always been you know like uh, good at solving complex problems so i used to feel like you know i ace at everything and you know i'm like i can solve any complex problems and it worked for me uh, you know in all the companies because uh, i used to work for small companies or startups so you know like i used to feel like i'm acing it out and then uh, when i joined amazon and i had my first uh, you know like design review with the stakeholders you know like i failed terribly and uh, my designs were great but when i was communicating my ideas i was failing and uh, people were not able to understand uh, some of the things or how i was uh, you know trying to convince them and uh, you know i kind of uh, felt a little upset then then uh, you know like went back to my mentor uh, there was a mentoring program so i you know got into the mentoring program and went back to my mentor and i told him so i still remember his words because he shaped my world or my life or my career i owe him everything he told me shamla you may be a great designer but unless and until you know like how to articulate yourself or communicate your ideas you feel as a designer because you are designing great things and that matters as a designer but communication and articulation matters more so storytelling, more, storytelling. yep storytelling right yep, yep. So uh, that's when you know, like, it really hit me hard that yes, I need to start, uh, you know, doing the storytelling or applying storytelling practices into my everything I do, and uh, slowly I learned how to do that. Now with most of the boot camps, you know, you will just have a mentor who will just mentor you, guide you, and that's it. I believe that uh, you know they don't take the responsibility of telling you how to learn the non-functional skills which is required to succeed in your career. And non-functional skills could be anything from communication skills to uh, storytelling to you know like portfolio reviews where you are presenting your portfolio to someone and they are giving you feedbacks. And that is where I partnered with Lee, and uh, we are going to 
provide the career coaching as well so should you need storytelling support we'll give you that and we'll also give you support in portfolio reviews or so we partnered with industry experts from uh, you know my colleagues from uh, previous jobs who are uh, actively working in the voice space uh, from amazon or uh, facebook or google and also from other tech companies like leading experts we'll have those people help you out uh, with the portfolio reviews or uh, expert interviews uh, where we are going to also you know support you with some of the mock interviews so by the end of the course you are not just you know functionally ready for the course but also ready with the non functional skills required to ace uh, the job or the interviews well that's a huge that's a huge piece so I mean, you, you just listed a who's who of industries, right? These are all the organizations that are driving voice. And so these are the people that you're going to have available to your students. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, I don't see any questions in here, but I do want to say that we are going to, we are going to share this entire presentation um, included, I'll attach it to the, um, to the recording. Is there anything else, Shamala, that you wanted to review before we uh, let our early morning audience uh, go do their thing? And by the way, we've got quite a few people saying, this is great, this is great, this is amazing, thank you so much. So hopefully thank we'll you. get lots of, lots of, um, lots of learners. Thank you so much. So yeah, so uh, the course is officially launching um, October 20th. And that is when our first batch will start. <clears throat> so if you are interested and want to join the program, uh, you know, feel free to uh, look into our website, which is digitalassistant.academy. Leave you could also, you know, like put it in your uh, chat window. You know, people will have it. And uh, uh, we are offering 15% discount uh, if you, you know, uh, register before 15th of uh, October. Uh, with the coupon code uh, DA Launch, D A L A U N L A U N C H, DA Launch. So, using the coupon code, you can get fifteen percent discount. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for uh, listening and uh, you know uh, listening to us on a Sunday morning. <laughs> so that's it. Unmute myself. Um, well, first of all, thank you for all that you're doing. And I'm glad that whatever tragedies you've overcome in your life have certainly been for a reason. And I hope that people take advantage of learning uh, from, from uh, people who know what they're doing in this space, because this actually is, is kind of a big deal. If we make if we don't design this well, and when I say we, I represent the people that do this, I will never claim to be able to do what you do. Uh, but if our designers aren't designing products that are ethical and moral and based in principle and uh, functional for human beings, it, this could be a real nightmare. So I'm glad that you're <laughs> I'm glad that you're starting this. Um, there are no other training programs out there that I know of that teach this, is that correct? Uh, there are programs which goes into some level, uh, like in bits and pieces, but not to the extent where, you know, everything is bundled into one. Yeah, so they will they will come out much better for it. All right. Well, if there's no other questions or comments, we're going to go ahead and sign off for today. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Shamala. It's been an honor. And I thank all of our early morning risers. Uh, you guys have a great Sunday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Lee. Thank you. Hold on. And don't go anywhere.